The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Now, we say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, during these warm, lazy days, with only a few weeks of school before summer vacation, the great Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy, finds it difficult to attack his studies with any degree of enthusiasm. Oh, brother, what a life. Nothing but work. School is for the birds. Come to think of it, they don't even make birds go to school. I bet it's illegal. And that English assignment, a 2,500-word theme... Oh, no, I can't do it. I don't know 2,500 words. <laughs> oh, grown. Gee whiz, the things they do to a Leroy, kid. what you moaning about? Bertie, do you know what I got to do? What you got to do? I got to write a 2,500-word theme. A whole novel? What about? I don't even know. I not only have to write it, I got to think what to write about. Boy, you are in trouble. Didn't the teacher give you any hint? She said to go to the library, pick a subject, and do a lot of research on it. Here it is baseball season, and I gotta go into a moldy old library. Well, Leroy, you can't write unless you know what you're writing about. The thing for me to do is to outsmart her. Say, I could write about something here at home. Why don't you write about your dog? Yeah. Let's see now. What'll I say about him? He eats, sleeps, and barks. Nah, that won't even cover a page. <laughs> I think I'll write about Unc. Mr. Gilfleer? Well, sure, he can do things a dog can't do. <laughs> well, you know your uncle well enough to write about him. I know. I'll follow him around for a day and take notes. I'll call it 24 hours with my uncle. What do you think, Bertie? I guess that'll be okay if nobody's going to read it but your teacher. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Hi, Unc. You, where are you, my boy? In your study. Sure. Yo. Studying? No, we're talking about you. What? Don't worry, Mr. Gillsleeve. This is nice talk. Well, naturally. Yeah, how are you, Bertie? Fine, thank you, sir. Um, how'd you like to have me follow you around for 24 hours? On dates and everything? <laughs> yeah, and take notes. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Leroy's going to write a theme about you, Mr. Gillsleeve. A theme? Yeah, I gotta write 2,500 words about something. Well, needless to say, I'm flattered, my boy. You mean you could have written this about anything or anybody? Sure. We'll start it tomorrow, okay, Uncle? Yes, indeed. Okay, see you later. What a fine boy. Yes, sir. He could have chosen any one of a number of personalities, Bertie. Yes, sir. Didn't he consider Washington, Lincoln, Eisenhower? Well, it was strictly between two of you. Oh, me and who else? You and the dog. <laughs> Good morning, Phoebe. Hello, oh, Mr. Jonas, do you? What can I do for you this morning? Well, I just thought I'd drop in and spend a few minutes before I have to meet Leroy. Isn't that all you're going to spend? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all this morning, Pete. Very well. Meeting Leroy, you say? Yeah, the boy's going to write a theme about me. You don't say. Yep. He's going around with me today and take notes, and then write it up and turn it in at school. <laughs> He's going to expose you at school? <laughs> <laughs> now, Peavy. 
You'd have to mind your P's and Q's today. No, it'll just be a routine day. 24 hours with my uncle, as Leroy calls it. Well, it's not too easy to live up to somebody's expectations. I discovered that when I married Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> oh? Like many young brides, she placed me on a pedestal. She thought I was the perfect husband. She did? Until we got home from Niagara Falls. Well, what happened? Well, I hate to say this, but my first day in the kitchen, I burned the biscuits. <laughs> Peavy, don't tell me you did the cooking. No, I didn't learn to run a lunch counter in a pharmaceutical school. Why, George, I didn't know you started out being henpecked. Oh, I wasn't henpecked. I was just hungry. But Mrs. Peavy later learned to be a fine cook. Yes, I know. But cooking has nothing to do with Leroy observing me for 24 hours. Well, you could be on the griddle before it's over. <laughs> what can happen? You know the boy has great respect for me. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I might even go so far as to say I'm his ideal. Yes, you might. And after he has this opportunity to observe me closely, he'll have a higher regard for me than ever. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, Leroy's probably waiting in the car, paper and pencil poised. Yeah, I mustn't be late. Promptness is a virtue. Yeah, I'll have to have him write that in. Aye, George, it makes a man feel good to be looked up to. Keeps him on his mettle. What's that? Oh, some lady can't get her car started. If I didn't have to hurry, I'd meet Leroy. I'd stop and offer to help her. Yeah, I guess I'd better look the other way and pretend I don't see her. I beg your pardon. Uh-oh. Oh, oh man. Uh, yes, miss? Well, I'll be glad to do what I can. Well, I'm terribly sorry to have to ask. Oh, that's all right. I'll move over and you can get in the driver's seat. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> uh, let's see now. It won't start. It certainly won't. Oh, now I see your problem. Your accelerator pedal's stuck. Carburetor's probably flooded. Yeah, there we are. Oh, thank you so much. Aren't you the water commissioner? Yes, indeed. Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve. Well, I'm so indebted to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, let's see if it starts first. There she goes. Oh, you're wonderful. Oh, it's nothing, Miss, uh... Miss, uh... You will. I have to meet my nephew now. Well, I don't want to detain you, but I've just learned to drive. Would you mind getting me out of this tight parking place? Not at all. Hmm. We don't have much room. Oh, I'd never get out of here. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're so strong. You think so? Oh, look at you. Spin that wheel. And without power steering. Well, I've got the power. Just tell me where to steer it. <laughs> you can back up another foot. Oh, dear. I think you locked bumpers with a car behind us. Oh, Frank. Well, I'd better get out and take a look. Oh, I'm inconveniencing you, aren't I? I... Oh, no, not at all. You're always glad to help a pretty lady. Oh, you're sweet. Well, thank you. <laughs> now, let me see. Yep, we're stuck all right. You get behind the wheel, I'll stand on the other car's bumper, and then you can pull out. Anything you say. Yeah, I'm going to be late to meet Leroy. By George, she's pretty. I wonder who she is. Yeah, all right. Get ready. I'm ready. Yeah, I'll just get her to drive me to my car. You're clear now. Hey, you. You wait, miss. You miss. Wait. I'm late to meet Leroy, and I don't even know her name. Well, there's my car. And yeah, luckily, Leroy hasn't shown up yet. 
It just shows everything comes out all right if you do a good turn for somebody. Yeah, I'll just get in the car and wait. Are you going to park here all day, Mac? Hey, Mac? Oh, hello, officer. You're not going to move it, huh? Oh, yes. Just waiting for my nephew. Uh-huh. Where is he, in a double feature? No, officer. Uh, will you do me a favor? Yes, indeed. What is it? Tell me, what does that sign say? Well, it says, uh, parking one hour. Yeah, that's what I thought it said. He's a snide one. <laughs> I came by here an hour ago. In fact, I was by here two hours ago and I saw this car. Well, it... But I said to myself, Eddie, be a good fella. The joker who parked this car here is probably from out of town. Maybe he just doesn't know any better. No, wait a minute, officer. You just don't know who I am. Well, let's get acquainted. Sign here. Oop. <laughs> officer, I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Now, look, a phony name won't get you out of this. <laughs> I'm not a phony. I'm city water commissioner. Oh. Oh, well, I beg your pardon. Yeah, well, that's better. <laughs> you must be new on the force. Yes, I am. I'll have to ask to see your driver's license. You know, I've got it right here in my pocket. I... Hmm. I should have it here in one of my pockets. Uh, go right ahead. I, I'm in no hurry. My time is your time. <laughs> I uh, yeah, had my driver's license in my wallet, but I don't seem to have my wallet. I'm sorry, officer. I'm sorry, too. You're making me do a lot of writing. Overtime parking. No driver's license. Yeah, officer, I can explain this. I stopped to help a lady in distress. Oh? Yeah, I had to help her start her car, and in getting it out of a close parking place, I locked bumpers. So? Well, I'm just pointing out the little delays a man runs into. And prior to that, I tarried in the drugstore a minute. Yeah, I can prove that at Peavy's Pharmacy. I stop at Peavy's every day for cigars or something. You have a cigar, officer? Oh, surely you don't think I'll overlook this for a cigar. Oh, no. No, that wasn't the idea. Hmm. Hi, Uncle. I'm all ready to start taking notes. Hello, Leroy. What's up? Well, officer, this is my nephew. Hello, young fella. Hi. Leroy, am I or am I not the city water commissioner? Yeah, sure. All right, I believe you. Great. Thank you, officer. I believe you're the water commissioner. I believe you locked the lady's bumper while fixing her starter. Fine. I also believe you parked overtime, you don't have a driver's license, and here's your ticket. Zoop. Hey, my team's going to be exciting. What? First notation, Unc runs a foul of the law. Leroy. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. A hostess named Hilda had dinner for eight. She planned and she worked so her meal would be great. It would have been, too, but her salad lacked zip. What poor Hilda needed was Miracle Whip. Some poetry, huh? Well, anyway, the idea is a mighty good one. Why let a flat-tasting salad detract from an otherwise perfect meal? Give that salad the bright, sparkling flavor you want it to have. Make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a wonderful flavor, a lively, teasing flavor, a peppy flavor that's just sharp enough. And it's a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing. That's because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe, a recipe that combines the best qualities of good old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip is blended carefully with special beaters, to give this salad dressing just the creamy, thick texture and satin smoothness you want. Smooth and delicious, it's no wonder Miracle Whip has become the most popular salad dressing ever created. Actually, Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Get Miracle Whip tomorrow. Visit the big salad carnival at your grocer's. See the idea-inspiring variety of fresh vegetables, fruits, and greens he has ready. And for just the right dressing to go with every salad, look to Kraft. Stock up on all the famous Kraft salad dressings. When 
the great Gildersleeve learned that his nephew, Leroy, had chosen him for the subject of a school theme, the water commissioner was highly pleased. But right now, the only person who's happy about the whole thing is Leroy. He's having a field day. Oh, boy, if this keeps up, my theme will win first prize. Leroy, if you're going to do a theme about me, why not get a fresh start? What? You just tear up what you've done. Start over. Are you kidding? And throw off the part about you being arrested? <laughs> Don't make it sound so bad, my boy. A lot of people get traffic tickets. You just happen to be taking notes at the wrong time. Yeah. Let me get it straight now. You didn't even have a driver's license, did you? I just didn't have it with me. I'll make a note of that. You're not writing all that down, are you? I just make an outline like the teacher told me. She said every theme has an opening, a body, and a conclusion. And you sure gave me an opening. <laughs> yes, yes. Bertie? You call me, Mr. Gillespie? Yes, Bertie. How about you call me? Uh, when that policeman asked for my driver's license, I discovered I didn't have my wallet with me. Have you seen it around the house? No, sir. It's not down here. And when I made you bed this morning, it wasn't under your pillow. Hey, I just had a horrible thought. What's that, Leroy? Was my allowance in your wallet? But... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Find the wallet. Turn the house upside down. Call a cop. Leroy will have no more policemen. <laughs> That sure got Mr. Gillsleeve's goat when the policeman gave him a ticket. Well, Bertie, it was very embarrassing. Ah, oh, Mr. Gillsleeve, you didn't mean no wrong. You just made a mistake, and it's human to make mistakes. Yes, but... Yes, it's human to make mistakes, and you're the most human man I know. No. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, you know you wouldn't be human if you didn't make mistakes. Yes, Bertie. That's right. You're the most human man I know. <laughs> Well, what's your next move, human? <laughs> Maybe to South America. Yeah, I just had to shake Leroy. With him taking notes on me, it's like living in a goldfish bowl. Yeah, it's pretty clever the way I sneaked out of the house without him seeing me. Yeah, I'll just spend a quiet afternoon here at the office. Boo! <laughs> Leroy! Hi, huh? You weren't trying to get away from me, were you? Me? Why do you say that? Well, you don't usually jump the back fence when you start to the office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't tell you I was coming to the office because I, I didn't think it would be very interesting to put in your theme. I'll take a chance on that. I'll stick around and wait. Leroy, you're making a game out of this. Yeah. Let me use your typewriter, Uncle. I ought to type up my notes. Oh, for... Anybody in? Who's that? The janitor. Come in, Harry. You uh, working this afternoon, Commissioner? It's incredible. Now, Harry... How do you spell incredible? <laughs> Leroy, don't put that down. Who's he, Commissioner? Your new secretary? No, he's my nephew. Oh. Leroy, this is Harry. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Yeah, if you do get a secretary, Commissioner, get a girl. Oh? You want me to tell you why? No. Oh, well, uh, don't mind if I clean up office, do you? Yeah, go right ahead. I know it's early, but I'm going out this evening with an old Navy friend. Yeah? One of your shipmates in town? Well, uh, hardly a shipmate. Uh, she's a wave. <laughs> oh, a date. Gosh, were you really in the Navy? Son, I was in the Navy so long, whenever I think of it, my head starts swimming. <laughs> Uh, what are you up to there at the typewriter? I'm writing a theme about my uncle for school. Oh. Yeah, Leroy came down to watch me and take notes. Oh, 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 well, now, if you want to dope on your uncle, just see me. Now, Harry? As janitor of this building, I know more scuttlebutt about what goes on here than the mayor does. Yeah? Harry. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll never forget the day the mayor walked in the water department. And guess who he found with his feet propped up on a desk, sound asleep? Unc? Yep. <laughs> Just as content as a walrus sunning himself on a hot rock. Oh, my goodness. Harry, when the mayor caught me asleep, you know I'd been up all night the night before trying to fix the snifter valve at the pump house. Yes, yeah, son, a lot of amusing things have happened to your uncle. Yeah? Uh, Harry, let's not carry tales. I'm not telling tales. I'm just telling him how you can run your business. Well, that's different. You know, one day, a big, tough fellow came up here complaining about the size of his water bill. Calls your uncle a nincompoop. Yeah? Harry... But you can be proud of your uncle, son. He stood right up to the man and he said, 
Hey, or I'll cut off your water. He did? Yes, sir. He. And then a good-looking girl came in and complained about her water bill. But your uncle was strictly business. Yeah? He cut her bill in half. <laughs> Terry, where is your loyalty? To the United States Navy. Well, pull anchor and shove off. Leroy went down for a malt. Give me time to organize the work on my desk. Yeah, I'll have to focus the boy's attention on the real job I do instead of those tall stories Harry told him. Hi, Unc. Hello, my boy. Anything happen I should know about while I was gone? No, no. Well, I'd better get back to typing my notes. Uh, Leroy, I'd forget what Harry told you. The important thing for your theme is to know how I conduct my business. Well, Unc, I don't think I'll have much room to write about your business. Well, that's the important thing. You should know that I'm very much in the job here from nine until five, filling important appointments. Sure. It's true. All day long, your old uncle is strictly business. No dilly-dallying. What's dilly-dallying? Well, it... Mr. Gildersleeve. Come in. Oh, there you are. Hey, now. Well, uh, hello, Miss... Uh... I'm sure you've been wondering what happened to your wallet. Yes, I, I've missed my driver's license. Well, here it is. I found it on the front seat of my car. Oh, you know, I probably dropped it when I started your motor. Well, you were so sweet to me this morning, I wanted to return it as soon as possible. Well, thank you. This must be dilly-dallying. <laughs> Isn't there some way I can reward you? You've already rewarded me. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> well, back to my typewriter. <laughs> what? I guess that was one of those important appointments you don't have anything but. Well, this wasn't exactly an appointment. That's what I thought. Give me a few facts about this girl. Who is she? Well, I don't know her name. How about that? Goes riding around town with a girl, leaves his wallet in her car, and he doesn't even know her name. Leroy, we weren't riding around town. She had parked the car. Parking, huh? <laughs> no. And get a load of that perfume. No wonder you dropped your wallet. Leroy, let's go home. Oh, boy, I can't wait to get home. i got enough material to write two things. Leroy, you don't have to use everything that happened today. A lot of these things can be explained. Sure. Well, like, see... There's the policeman who gave me the ticket this morning. Where? You're walking up ahead there. He just turned the corner. By George, it's a good time to show him I have my driver's license back. Why did you forget it? He said he believed you had a license. I don't want to forget it. The officer! Officer! That's enough, Uncle. He heard you. It... Well, I'm glad that girl returned my wallet. Hey, officer, uh, will you step over here a minute? Oh, it's you again. Oh, so you remember me. Yes, I do. Hey, Unc, why is he getting out his book? Well, officer, I wanted to catch up with you to show you I have my driver's license. See? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, well, I just wanted to show you. Yeah. Uh, now I want to show you something. Yeah? Tell me, what is this you're parked by? Yeah, a fire plug. <laughs> It was. No, watch it, Leroy. Right off the bat, I got pinched for overparking. Oh, I heard about that. And then a girl comes into the office to return his wallet, and Unc claims he doesn't even know her. <laughs> Leroy, I tried to explain that. And then on the way home, Unc gets a ticket for parking beside a fire plug. Uh-oh, how'd he happen to do that? He stopped to show a cop he had a driver's license. <laughs> Leroy, lay off. Okay, I better get busy. Can I use your typewriter, Unc? Oh, I guess so. It's been quite a day, Bertie. Yes. Sir. Everything happens when a man is trying to put his best foot forward. Yes. Sir. Yeah, I hate to think what Leroy's putting down. And how it'll sound to the class and his teacher. Yes, sir. I think I'll take
take a look over his shoulder and see what he's saying about me. What are you looking at, Uncle? Yeah, you, well, uh... Well, here, I'll read it to you. Yeah. <clears throat> the subject of my theme is lazy and fat, Oop. but very lovable. Yeah. He has sad eyes and big ears. <laughs> Leroy, what are you saying about me? I'm not writing about you. No? Nobody believes that stuff. I'm writing about my dog. Well, at least I got one break today. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. A tempting, fancy salad main dish deserves something special in the way of a bread or cracker accompaniment. So try hot cheese-filled rolls, corn sticks, or oven-toasted crackers. That good-looking salad deserves something special in the way of dressing, too. So use Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip is so delicious, it makes any salad, elegant or plain, taste better than ever. Try it. See what the lively, teasing flavor of Miracle Whip can do for your salad favorites. See why millions prefer Miracle Whip. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I see you're wearing a flower in your buttonhole. It's a buddy poppy, Peavy. I just bought it outside. Well, we should all help our veterans in every way we can. You bet. They've certainly helped us over a lot of rough spots. Yeah, I'm here to tell you. You haven't been in since Leroy started his theme about you, Mr. Gildersleeve. How, how did it turn out? You know, he didn't write about me, Peavy. He ended up writing about his dog. Well, that should make quite a tale. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. That was a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Dog, tail. I got it. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Why didn't he write about you? Well, everything went wrong that day, Peavy. When I left here to meet Leroy, I was stopped by a girl. Mm, that's bad. It started an embarrassing chain of events. While fixing her car, I lost my driver's license. A policeman gave me a ticket. You don't say. Yeah, if that girl hadn't stopped me, everything would have been all right, Peavy. I'm off women. All my life, they've caused me nothing but trouble. My, my, what's that? Oh, some woman trying to park her car, locked bumper. Say. What is it, Mr. Gildersleeve? That's the girl I'm talking about, Peavy. The one that caused me so much trouble yesterday. Mmm, she's pretty. Yeah. I guess I really should go out and help her again. Now, you've had your share of trouble. Why don't I go? Peavy. <laughs> You stick to your soda fountain. <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon. Are you in trouble? Oh, hello there. Hello, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Uh... <laughs> Bye, George. I'm going to find out her name if it takes all night. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Gene Bates, Byron Kane, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store. Thank <laughs> you.